Hey guys, today we are going to talk about this card from Unglued. It went from, looks like 10 cents, maybe 20 cents for a good copy. And now it is doing a buyout. It's a very interesting card. And Pay Money Wubby is responsible for it. I accidentally manipulated the MTG market. So he loved the card. The text is really funny. And all the Pay Money Wubby... Wubby supporters watching the stream went out to buy the card. I love the fact that he o opens old vintage product. Like Unglued, I think the most expensive card in this set is the Blacker Lotus. And it's about like a $15, $20, $25 card. But the box is really expensive. And very rare. This comes during a time... I think Unglued was Urza Saga. If I remember correctly from my childhood... Unglued came out very close to Urza Saga. And that would have been Pokemon First Edition. So this could have easily been a Pokemon First Edition base box. But instead it's Unglued. Most people would never open it. Most people are not pay money wubby, right? And I and I think it's good. I think it's really, really good for Magic. I'm very optimistic about Magic's future. Uh, Penguin Zero. Uh, Charlie. He is now making videos with Tolarian Community College. I don't know if that video has come out yet, but I assume it will do incredibly well. And I don't think that would say false assumption. I, I think it will do very, very, very well. And Magic is booming. You know, Magic is doing incredible. Universe Beyond, give them credit. I thought that was stupid. I was wrong. The numbers prove that I'm wrong. Uh, it's okay to be wrong. Um, and I absolutely was. I thought it would absolutely. I thought I thought it would fail, but uh, it did not do that. Uh, it did not do that at all. So beyond, um, you know, beyond all this, uh, he's also opening Strixhaven. Wow, that set did really. That set has not aged well. Uh, looking for demonic tutor, and he found it, and he's happy. And you can tell that he really does enjoy Magic the Gathering. This is very different from the NPL. As I mentioned, I really do not love the NPL. I think the NPL is probably one of the worst things to happen to Magic the Gathering in a long, long time. Uh, they canceled, yes, uh, they canceled my favorite artist. I wish I could be making this up. My favorite artist was a lesbian. And the MPL member Autumn, as well as Reed Duke, as well as Huey, as well as all of them, canceled my favorite artist. An artist that I look forward to, Teresa Nielsen, seeing her artwork in the cards. So that I was not happy about that. That was basically the overall effect that the MPL, $100 million later, had on... So it's one thing when you have people who actually love your card game... And they don't need your Wizard of Coast money. They don't need that type of stuff. It's another thing when you don't. And you're trying to train these Magic players to become celebrities. It's a lot easier, in my opinion, to tell Penguin Zero, Hey, we got some chase cards too. I know you're addicted to Yu-Gi-Oh! Starlight. Why don't you open some of this? Like, I would be shocked if these two still don't receive free product. And I don't think they do. I'd be shocked at, like... You know, they did exactly what the MPL was supposed to do. They were supposed to go out and find their own sponsors. Right? And CGC is a big sponsor. You know, I don't love CGC. But I appreciate that they're getting into Magic the Gathering. So even if I don't love a company, I can appreciate that a company wants to do Magic the Gathering. Which is not every single company. So, hey, you know, good on them. I mean, they have been doing a really good job promoting it. Especially Pay Money Wubby. And you'd be like, oh, he loves Magic for a long time. I know, but he didn't do as much as he's doing now. He's doing a lot more with Magic now. And it's getting more views. His subscribers are growing. The viewership is go growing. That's all good stuff. You know, that's all really, really good stuff in my opinion. And at the end of the day, let's be honest here. When you have a growing brand, just get on the mud effing train and let's ride this train as far as we can go. That's how I feel. I mean, am I the only one who feels that way? I don't know. But that's how I feel. I feel like, hey, we have 
a golden goose. His name is Pay Money Wubby or Penguin Zero or whatever. Tolarian just do collabs. I mean, they they have massive audiences, and the most important part is their audiences aren't Magic the Gathering players. So they're new. So if they do play Magic the Gathering, like buy the Clan Bastard card, they are going to help our game. We the the one thing I always have been very concerned about. I have a large position in Magic the Gathering, a uncomfortably large position, as many of you know. Um. One thing that I've always been very, very concerned about long term is how are we going to get new players? <laughs> like, you know, it never occurred to me that there was a plan that we could get new. I always thought, oh, well, Pokemon gets a new player because people, there's a video game and they play the video game and they want to collect the cards. Or, you know, I thought that was like a really obvious thing, right? Or they had buy a plush and now they learn there's a card of their. I never saw like the long term plan for Magic. You know, I oh, I'm very con I was very concerned that that one day it'll be just a bunch of sixty year olds and that's it, and there'll be no one younger than that. So when they inherit your collection, they will have no idea what is worth. And yeah, you know, I I believe that this is the way they do have long they have they have younger audiences who are not native to Magic the Gathering. I e they're going to be new audiences. I e that's perfect. So I do believe these two can save Magic the Gathering from the epic demise. And I, 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 I saw it coming. I, they, there was no new players. You go to an event, it's the same people every time at Friday Night Magic. And I saw that when I was playing in uh, Houston. It's the same mother effing people. Every, and even if you go to a new store, it's the same mother effing people in that store. There was never any new players learning the game. It was all these grinders and people who were trying to get like $10 of store credit from you. It's, it's one of the most ridiculous things ever. Like, how can this game survive if all of it is is the same people over and over again? And the answer is these guys. In the info, We live in a card market that is so influencer-driven from Logan Paul to, uh, I mean, Logan Paul. Uh, down in Houston, we have a pretty big celebrity. His name is Hunter Pence. He owns a store called Coral Sword. I still haven't gone out there. It's kind of, it's really out the way. I live uh, in Humble. Uh, I heard it's a really great store, and he funded it. And again, he and his wife are celebrities, and like not like A list, but like very very for nerds A list. But like they can bring their own friends to play. I believe they still have a podcast or something. I haven't really checked up on them since uh, COVID times. But yeah, I mean, Pay Money Wubby, I mean, he has done a lot for the game. A lot. I would imagine Pay Money Wubby has done more for this game than the entire MPL league. A hundred million dollars was sunk in, was supposed to be sunk into this league. They pulled it like in year three or year four. So they saved themselves about 60 million, but they still spent a lot of money up front. Just have Pay Money and Wubby invite all his friends, including Penguin Zero and all the other friends he has, and let them play Magic. Boom, problem solved. That was always the that was the influencers are here. <laughs> they are here. Bye, guys.